Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I hope that everybody is doing well. I'm R.C. Blakes and um, I'm here to just discuss something that's on my heart. Um, if you're watching this uh, later into the future, we are presently in the 2020 uh, Corona crisis and um, we're quarantined to some extent or another. And, and so I'm sitting at my church. I'm the pastor of the New Home Family Worship Center. And I'm talking to you today because um, I don't have a whole lot of other things to do in, at the moment. And so I wanted to just break in and to share with you all today. I'm on no schedule today. Good evening, everyone from Chicago. I'm so glad to see you all coming in. Um, I wish this were like Facebook where you could directly invite people to come in, but uh, it's not. If you, if you can, if you would, uh, share this on your Facebook platform. Text your, your girlfriends or your, your homeboys and let them know that we're on. Uh, something on my heart today, uh, and this is based on, well, this is motivated should I say, by some conversations that I've had this week. Hello from England. I was supposed to be in London um, last month. And of course, this prevented uh, Lisa and I for, uh, from being there. Also, the cruise is canceled for July. That was selling out like crazy. But God knows, and the timing will be perfect when the time is right. But this is motivated by some uh, conversations that I, I've had this week via telephone, via email, um, in reference to people who have access to certain others and abuse that access, and uh, people who do not even deserve a conversation um, taking advantage of uh, great people. And these people are controllers. You know, when you wake up and you realize that you have attached your life or you've allowed, should I say, you realize, hello, France, I'm so glad to see you. Um, you wake up and you realize that you've allowed a person to attach to you, thank you, Veretta, God bless you, that should have never even had access to you, and now this person is in your life, and you don't know how to get rid of them. It's a controlling spirit. And see, I relate to that, because presently I'm sitting at the back of my Houston, Texas sanctuary, and so I have I have, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five locations in our ministry. I uh, oversee two and a half, so to speak. And um, so I've been pastoring a long time. And I find that the, the controlling spirit in people, you know, not even in a, not even in a romantic sense, but just in a social sense, can be so um, paralyzing. Reunion Island, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. That on the other side of Africa? It can be so paralyzing. It can be so debilitating that you find yourself managed by someone that should not be able to manage you. This person does not compare to you intellectually. This person does not compare to you physically. This person does not compare to you spiritually. But yet there's something working in this individual that causes them to take control of your life. Like we read that text in Proverbs where the young man is taken in by the strange, well, strange woman, so to speak, but she's a, a loose woman. Her husband is away. 
She calls him the good man is away. And she takes this green young man in and the Bible says, with her much fair speech, she forced him. There are people in this world that can force us into things psychologically. Psychologically. And it's, it's almost as intrusive or even more intrusive than a person that is physically capable of picking us up and moving us to where they want us to go. There are people who have such a powerful control over us. It's like they are remote directing our lives from some other point. These people are called controllers. And there's a powerful text in, in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 13 through 19, where it says, And he said unto his sons, and I encourage you to read the whole story. He said, said unto his sons, no more drama. Thank you so much. Said unto his sons, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon. And went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came is from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I, I may not return with thee nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, and that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him, so he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. Now, when you read the whole story, you'll find that this young prophet, God gave him specific instructions what to do, how to go in, and how to come out. This older guy that he never met before, pops up and says to him, well, there's a change of plan. God told me something different. Come home with me and eat bread and drink water. He went home with the man disobeying the instruction he knew he got from God. The man manipulated him. And when he got him to his house and you read the whole story, the man pauses at dinner and he says, because you disobeyed the Lord and because you're sitting at my table, your body shall not return home. You're going to be you're going to be killed here in this land. And the young man was. And you see the intention, the intentional manipulation that leads to the destruction of the one being manipulated. This man intentionally misled this boy to bring him into a place of destruction. And the and thing you want to pay attention to, because some of the characteristics of a controller are they are very talkative and they're very self-promoting. They are very talkative and they're very self-promoting. It's kind of like, you know, the, the smooth player that slides into the woman's life and he avoids meaningful conversation that might reveal anything about himself. But then you have this other guy who slides into the woman's life or vice versa. Woman slide into a man's life and they just just constantly yapping. They're constantly yapping about stuff that does not matter. It's almost like they're talking so fast they don't want you to get a word in. It's like they're hypnotizing you with their words and you find yourself yielding and doing things that they are asking you or telling you to do that in your heart you really don't want to do. They're, they're talkative. Controllers are very talkative and they're very self-promoting. Now he comes in with what? I'm a prophet just like you. I'm a prophet just like you. And yeah, 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 yeah. come on with me. The Lord said, come on, it's going to be all right. And when, when the man got through using all of those words and talking and promoting himself, it's almost like the young boy said, well, you know, after all, he looks like a nice guy. He said he's a prophet. And the man manipulated him and controlled him mentally to the point that he disobeyed God. Now, doesn't that, doesn't that um, remind you, or many of you, should I say, of the situation 
or situations that some of you all are in where this person's words seem to steer your life, always seem to steer your life in a direction that leads you away from what you know God told you. You know, it, now I've lived long enough. You know, I don't have all this gray hair for nothing. And this, if this quarantine stuff continues, y'all gonna see this thing turn white. But I've lived long enough to figure out Usually people that's talking too much are not people we should be listening to. A man that comes into your life just yappity, 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 and bragging about what he got and what he worth. Mm -mm. Because people that really got it. Uh, what is that, Ange? Thank you so much. People that really have it, people that are really worth it, they don't talk about it. A man that's really going to step into your life and do something, he don't talk about it. He, he, he doesn't tell, he shows. You know, I was just on the phone with somebody and they just yappity, yappity. I mean, I, I knew you won't, you know. So I said, okay, I got to go. Because, you know, that is a bad sign. A person that's talking all the time and a person that's self-promoting. You don't have to promote yourself when you have it. I don't need to prove to anybody that I am who I am. I am who I am. If I step into your life and I'm constantly just constantly just running my mouth, I am trying to convince you of something that I know is not true. I'm trying to paint a picture of something that is not authentic. And controllers are talkative and self-promoting. There's some signs that you, you, you may be some other signs that you may be dealing with a controlling spirit. They contradict what you know you heard God say. They contradict what you know you heard God say. Or, okay, let's say you're not, you're not that spiritually in tune. They contradict what you know is right. And they put it in a way that you begin to entertain thoughts of doing what you know is wrong. You forsake what you know is right because of this person's yappity, 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 and they're just like mesmerizing or hypnotizing you with these words. You forsake what you know is right and you, you begin to yield to what you know is wrong because they contradict what you know you heard God say. Romans 1, 22 through 25 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So they, the, the signs that you're dealing with a controller, they're contradicting what you know you heard God say. Okay, let me give you a real good example right here. Y'all know I'm a preacher. You know, my, you know I got old school values. Y'all know all of this. If you've been watching me any time, any length of time, you know, you know all of this. You know, so don't come to me with all this new stuff because I ain't with all of that. You know, there's some of y'all who have made the commitment that you're going to preserve yourself until marriage. And I know a lot of you say, I ain't trying that. Well, that's your business. You know, you do what you want to do. But when you've made that commitment, isn't it amazing how? Isn't it amazing how a man will slide into your life or a woman? Because I've had men that have made a commitment to abstinence. And have had women to pressure them into sex. Which is sad. I had men say, I want to. I, you know, I, I don't, I want to abstain until I get married and I want to marry you. And the woman putting pressure on him, you want to marry me? Well, we need to have, we need to knock some boots. Sad. But in most cases, it's the man pressuring the woman. Now, you know what God said. You know what you believe in your heart. You know what you, you know what you feel is right. You know how you were raised. And now all of a sudden you sitting here because this individual is in your life. 
And now this individual has blown your mind to the point that you're ready to throw all of that down the drain, all of your values, all of your principles, all of your faith, all of your rearing. You're going to throw all of that down the drain because you got a person in your ear that's contradicting what you know is right. And then you're going to try to justify it. Everybody having sex. Everybody having sex. Everybody catching STDs, too. Everybody, everybody making babies out of wedlock, too. If you're going to follow everybody. Come on now. So you, signs that you're dealing with a controller, they contradict what you know you heard God say. They twist you into doing something you're uncomfortable with in your spirit. Not only do you not not only do you know that this is not right, you're not even comfortable doing this. There's a witness in your spirit that this is wrong and I shouldn't be doing it. And somehow this person twists your mind, controls you to a point that you go against that unction. You go against that feeling in your spirit that this is wrong. Now, let me show you where this works a lot. And I'm going to deal with this because I think it's necessary at a later date. I'm going to deal with this specifically. Men that step into the lives of. Broke men that step into the lives of successful women or finan at least financially successful women. Talk you into doing all kinds of things. Now, this is a broke man. He selling you all of these dreams. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you here. We're going we're gonna to have a. We're going to have an apartment in Paris. We're going to have one in New York City. We're going to have we're going to have one down in, the, in, in Trinidad. I want my you to imagine that your dreams. In the meantime, can you pay my car note? You gonna get me an apartment in Paris? We gonna have one in Trinidad, one in New York, and you can't pay your car note? And then you going in your bank account, sending this man money, a grown man? I know I'm about to lose some of y'all now. You gonna send a grown man money? Thank you, Ange. You gonna send a grown man money? And in your spirit, you know, your daddy raised you better than that. Here, you making this money on, on, on the, 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 the sweat and the labor of your father's um, working to educate you. And now your father has raised you and educated you and made you a financially independent person. Thank you, Tammy. And you, gonna, you, gonna, you, you got nerve enough to be sending money to a grown beggar of a man? You know that ain't right. Oh, watch this. Let me show you something else they'll do to you. Um, you know, I had, I had a, I had a few, I had a few, I had a few mishaps. I had a few mishaps, and and you know, my car. You know, I got to get to my job, and and my car ain't working no more. And and, and you know, I went down there, and the people said got something on my credit, but it got to be something, something funny business going on. Can you co-sign for me? Man, I almost said something. Your answer really should be, and I know this is going to trip some of y'all out because y'all, I'm a preacher. Y'all say, oh, you preach it? Yeah, I said it. Hell no. Hell no, I'm not signing for you. You got to be crazy. Hell no, I'm not signing for you. You're not even supposed to watch this. You're supposed to raise your children and get them to a point. Thank you, Gina. And once they get to a point of adulthood and you've given them a start and they jack up their credit after you've uh, created a foundation for them, you ain't supposed to sign for them. You certainly not supposed to be signing for no man, but you got a what? Controller. You got a controller. That's what? Just twisting your mind. Got you doing something you're uncomfortable with in your spirit. You know? Thank you, Shamika. Got you doing stuff you're not comfortable with in your spirit. It doesn't even agree with your constitution. And you doing it. I've learned that I used to be, listen to me, I used to be, uh, you know, just the toxic empath, just I want everybody to be happy. I want to make everybody feel comfortable. I'm a pastor. I'm a man of God. And I just want to, well, can we just all get along at the expense of my happiness and my personal health? Not no more. Not no more. This is the way it is. And if you don't like it, the door goes both ways, in and out. Use it. 
But you're not going to come up in here and manipulate me and, and make me do what you want me to do. Talking about because you said you're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be a man of God. I am a Christian. I am a man of God. And the answer is still no. Because I'm not going to be controlled. I'm not going to be controlled. They infringe on clear boundaries to force their will. Controllers, you know, you told this man, I'm not having no sex. Uh, I'm interested in you. I like you, but I'm not having no sex. And every time the man got you out, you know, he like an octopus, hands all over you. What is wrong with you? He's trying to force, he's trying to, he's infringing on clear understood boundaries because he's trying to enforce his will over your will. That's a controller. A man is not even supposed to control you. Your husband is not supposed to control you. I told y'all something happened with Lisa and I about a month or so ago where, you know, thank you, Angie, where, um, they're talking about the shortage of nurses and Lisa's Lisa's kept all of her credentials in order all of these years. She's been um, away from nursing about 24 years. And she was saying how certain places were calling for calling nurses out of retirement because of this crisis. And when she mentioned it to me, you know, I, I just automatically went into husband. Oh, no, you're not going out there. No, you're not. Go I'm, uh, uh. And Lisa said to me, you can't tell me that. You can't tell me that if I decide I want to go, you can't tell all you can do for me is pray for me. And you know what I said? I said, you know what? You're right. Because even a husband is not supposed to control. Come on now. A husband is supposed to lead. He's not supposed to control. He's not supposed to infringe on clear boundaries. Though she's married to me, there's still clear boundaries relative to what? Her individuality. And if that is the conviction of her heart, just like she stands behind me, I'm supposed to do what? Stand behind her. But a controller will ignore clear boundaries and the controller will enforce or seek to enforce uh let me see my, my power leg is going low on me here okay number four they manipulate your circle to control you these are signs of controllers they'll manipulate your circle so they can control you so they're getting close with your people your family, your friends, and they'll control your circle. Thank you, Angela. They'll control your circle without your circle realizing it so that they can impose their will on you through them. Now, uh, let's see something here. Uh, okay, look. Look in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Hope oh, my... Hold on one second here. Luke chapter 10 verses 38 through 42 says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. Let me see something here. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name. J.D. That's what I'm going to call you. God bless you. Came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha, received them into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now in plain English, you have two sisters here. One's in the kitchen working, Martha. One's at Jesus' feet, worshiping Jesus, Mary. Martha gets angry because Mary's not in the kitchen with her, 
And she tries to use Jesus to control Mary. Why didn't she just address Mary directly? It's called triangulation. She wanted to control the one that's between them. She wanted to use Jesus so that Jesus could manage Martha to do what Mary, or manage Mary to do what Martha wanted her to do. And this is happening in your life more times than you realize. Thank you, Linda. Now let's talk about how to break a controlling spirit. Number one, you have to enforce your position. You can't be no punk. You, you cannot be no punk and break the grip of a controller. At some point, you got to get, you must get a backbone and you have to become righteously indignant and you have to enforce your position. You got to be able to say, no, you're going too far. The answer is no, I'm not doing that. You can stop talking so much because, you know, uh, it's not going to happen. Jim Starr, thank you so much. It's not going to happen. I, I, save it, save it, save your breath. It's not going to happen. No, the answer is no. You got to enforce your position. Controlling spirits do not like resistance. They do not like opinions that don't agree with theirs. Controllers are typically bullies who look for weak people who won't resist. When you start resisting, they get to moving. The moment you step up and you say, no, it ain't going to happen like that. Thank you. B. Irvin, thank you so much. Moment you step up and say, no, it's not going to be, it's not going that way. I'm sorry, sir. And do it with a smile. It's not going to go that way. No, 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 no. Just calm down. No, the answer is still no. You have to enforce your position. When you look at Nehemiah, he's rebuilding the walls and people, Sanballat, another guy came and said, come down off the wall. Come chill with us. Nehemiah said, I ain't coming down. And he wasn't trying to be politically correct. He just said, I'm not coming down. Why should I come down to you while the work ceases? At some point, you have to enforce your position. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The moment you start resisting this spirit, you're going to find him getting a grip and going. The reason they keep hanging around is because you're still passive. You know, you're still passive. You just... You still, uh, you're trying to, you're trying to preserve their feelings, even though they're trying to cut your throat. You're trying to preserve, you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You're a Christian. I'm a Christian too. But at a certain point, you got to enforce your position. Number two, you got to renounce the spiritual influence off of your mind. You got to recognize that this person has managed me from a spiritual place. And that the kind of control you have over my mind is not natural. This is not just a natural attraction. This is demonic. Thank you, Ella. Thank you so much. This is demonic. And you have to recognize that you may not be the most religious person in the world, but you've got to be able to say in your own spirit, Father God, I thank you for pulling down these strongholds off of my mind. God, I thank you for giving me the power to overcome this influence and this stronghold that has managed my life in the wrong direction. People who possess controlling spirits have a way of getting in your head and creating soul ties. And it will require deliverance to be set free from their approval and the passive aggressive manipulation that they use against you. So you got to renounce the spiritual influence off of your mind. Mm -mm. And to see the way, way you do that, you, Father, I thank you that no, no one, no thing, no entity has access to my soul but you. Cover my soul, Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, wrap my soul up in your presence that nothing can get through. Come on now. Nothing can get through. And that's where you begin to, uh, Bammy girl, I think that is. Thank you so much. That's where you begin to do some spiritual warfare because this stuff is spiritual. If somebody had that kind of manipulation and that kind of control over your mind. Look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And a stronghold is a thought system that's dominant in your mind that does not serve you well. 
Drug addiction is a stronghold. Sex addiction is a stronghold. These are things that get planted in your soul that, you know, you give your time and your energy and your attention to, and these things do not serve you well. Now, number three, rebuke the manipulation for what it is. It's not love. It's not love. Mm -mm. It's not it's it's not love. It's not it's not a, a, a person that needs to just grow a little bit. I just need to be patient with you. It's none of those things. This is manipulation, period. I have been I have been played. I have been scammed. My bank records prove it. The bank, the dark circles under my eyes prove it. I have aged since I've been with you. I have, you have wrecked all of my vital relationships. Uh, thank you, Miss Toy. Thank you so much. You have wrecked all of my vital relationships. I am spiritually emptied because of you. I am doing things that I'm not proud of because of you. You have to rebuke the manipulation for what it is. Stop putting lipstick on a pig. Stop putting lipstick on a pig. You ain't got no potential here. You ain't got no potential here. You got a user. You got a pimp. Basically, you got a user. You got a pimp. You got to you got to rebuke this manipulation for what it is. If you can't call it what it is, you can't be free from it. At some point, you must become vocal about this spirit and stand against the oppression. Relinquish any false responsibility you may assume to be responsible uh, for relative to their feelings. I am responsible. For, I'm not responsible for your feelings. I, I'm not I'm not responsible to package this in a politically correct way to preserve your feelings when you come into my life and wreck my life without any consideration for me at all. You think I care about how you feel? You think God demands that I care about how you feel? I don't care nothing about how you feel. I'm calling it what it is. Jesus. God's girl. God bless you. I'm calling it what it is. And I'm rebuking this manipulation. This has been a manipul. This has been an exercise in manipulation. And I'm on the wrong end of the exercise. I'm not worried about preserving no, no image. I'm not worrying about how I look in front of people. All I'm concerned about is getting you out of my life. That's all I'm concerned about. You got to go. That's all I'm concerned about. Once you gone, I'm good, but you got to go. You're not going to control my life. You're not going to sit in the background with your little, 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 little remote thing like I'm some little toy in the street. And you drive a little car down the road there. You, you managing turning me around. No, no. No more of that. It's over now. It's over now. That was, that was when I didn't know any better. I know better now, so I'm going to do better. Rebuke the manipulation for what it is. And you look in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. Michelle, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. In Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18, it says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying. They're always using you for their own advantage. You see that? Let me just read it. As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. When, when theirs no longer an advantage for them, they will leave you. So when you rebuke the manipulation for what, okay, let me finish reading. The same followed Paul in us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So we see the spirit in this girl. 
saying all the nice stuff. Oh, these men are the men of the most high God. But Paul knew it was a demon. And Paul didn't play around with it. He knew it was a spirit of manipulation and control. He rebuked the spirit that was in the girl. And the Bible says the spirit came out the same hour. And then you read the rest of the story. The people that were using the girl for their financial advantage got mad with Paul and, and, and put them in jail. Because they always get angry. The controller always gets angry when, when their little um, nest egg dries up. The nest egg they didn't build. So you got to rebuke the manipulation for what it is and then you got to embrace the isolation that's number four and i'm done you got to embrace the isolation i cannot talk about the isolation enough because the unspoken fear of anyone that is breaking any kind of a toxic relationship is the aloneness that's the unspoken fear because you have been you have become so comfortable with this attachment Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much. You become so comfortable with the attachment that even though you know it's dysfunctional, um, it's still your norm. And there's a there's a there's a strange, sick comfort that you find in the dysfunctional norm that it is. And so when you start embracing the idea of shutting this down, putting this person out, the thing you silent, silently struggle with is, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do when they're gone? Who am I when they're gone? Whenever you are taking control of your life and breaking other people's control off of your life, they will isolate, watch this, not only must you isolate from them, but they will isolate and they will castigate you. They'll begin to try to sabotage you in, in terms of your social circles. That's why you got to get to a point where you become so free that you you don't have no secrets, you know, because when, when you're able to talk about it, when you when you dismiss the shame of everything that happened, you then take all of that individual's power away because they're banking on you to be shame and then they'll use the shame um, to, to blackmail you, so to speak. But when, when you no longer shame and you're no longer afraid of the isolation, it's then that you begin to take your power back. And the first sign of you regaining power of your life is isolation. It's when you're able to be by yourself, alone, without them, and happy. That's when you're really coming to yourself, when you're able to be alone by yourself and happy. Gotta let the heart break for the soul to heal. Isolation is the breaking of the heart. So what? Let that heart break. Let it break. Feel the pain. Experience it. Be able to define it because you're going to need to remember it. Because once your heart is broken, your soul begins to heal. God breaks your heart so he can pour in the oil of healing. You got to let it happen, though. And the Bible says in Luke 6, 22 and 23, Blessed are you when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you, cast you out for, uh, cast, ca and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You ain't the first, you won't be the last. You got to embrace that isolation. And once they realize that you, 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 you really broken that control, they're going to try to do everything they can to drag your name. You can't worry about that. You, don't, you can't even care about that. You can't care about that. You just got to ask the Holy Spirit to give you the power to stay true to what you know you're supposed to do. Keep this person out of your life. They got to go. And they got to stay gone. 
by any means necessary. Do you hear what I'm saying? So, that's my little thought on this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, from Quarantine Worship Center. <laughs> that's my little thought. You all are my congregation now. My congregation is the whole wide world. Repent, remove, renounce, and renew. There it is. There it is. That's from Soul Ties right there. There it is. You all are my congregation now. This is from Quarantine Family Worship Center International. Hallelujah. So I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you got something out of my little rant today. But again, as I said when I started, this was motivated by a few conversations that I've had this week. And um, about three, actually. And uh, it's just, it's time. God does not want us coming out of this um, crisis in the same broken position. And if you're, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to exit this crisis in a healthy fashion, you got to get rid of these people. They got to go. You cannot, you can no longer entertain these situations uh, with these controlling people, these do nothing manipulative people that um, have added nothing to your life. It just cannot happen. It must not happen. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much. It must not happen. And I declare in the name of Jesus, it will not happen. Now, Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your people. And I thank you for your power that is at work in the lives of your people now, giving them the strength and the ability and the wisdom and the will to do those things, dear God, that will position them uh, for better moving forward. We bind every spirit that has had a grip on the minds, on the hearts of your people, and we break it off now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for freedom and liberty in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Don't forget to stop by rcblakes.com. Sign up for my mailing list. Um, periodically, I'm going to try to do better. I send out inspirational thoughts. Uh, just to keep you lifted. Uh, and uh, you also get all of the information. Thank you, Grace of Rose. Thank you, that's a beautiful name. You also get all of the information relative to the things that I have going on. And um, yeah, products, books, things of that nature. So go to rcblakes.com, sign up for my mailing list. It takes all of 15 seconds to do that. Um, and also don't forget to stop by rcblakes.com those of you that may need the, the Soul Ties online program or the Queenology, you know, or the Transcending the Father Wound, those of you that are struggling with the idea that your fathers were not in your lives, or those of you who are women in ministry, uh, we have an online program for women, Wisdom for Women in Ministry. Go there. Victor Hicks, God bless you. Go there and um, go there and, and look, check those out. But just know I love you. Pray for me. This is R.C. Blakes coming to you once and again from Quarantine Family Worship Center. Hallelujah. Uh, saying you're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. God bless you. Share this if you don't mind. Share this if you don't mind on your other platforms. God bless you. I'll talk to you real soon. Have a great day.